Good. What we have here is the Sony Ericsson Xperia Play. It's the first PlayStation certified device in the world. Before we even talk about the gaming experience, we need to establish that what you get here also is a full featured Android smartphone running on the latest version of the Android platform. So it's Android 2.3 Gingerbread. So you get the, all the enhancements of that and, and the Google mobile services that you would expect. Uh, in the hardware, you've got two cameras. You've got a VGA camera, forward-facing camera for video chat surfaces and self-portrait and such. And then on the other side of the device, you have a five megapixel primary camera with an LED camera flash. And probably what you're noticing already here is the co-branding with Verizon. And we're happy to announce that this is coming really soon to Verizon. You're gonna see this probably mid-April to early May. Uh, so very excited about that. When you look at uh, the, the home pages, let me go back to the home page there. So you have five home page panels. You'll start to see a little bit of Verizon customization there, the Vcast App Store. And then you have visual voicemail from Verizon, Verizon Navigator, and then my Verizon wireless application. And the five panels, of course, with plenty of room for shortcuts and widgets that you want to add on. You have the fastest Wi-Fi capability. You have 802.11 BG and N. And that's really important overall for the device, but especially when we start going into the gaming proposition and downloading large games and doing multiplayer gaming, that's going to be really cool too. So let me, while I'm talking about the gaming, turn the phone into landscape and slide it open. We'll see what happens. Now we open up the Xperia Play Game Launcher. And the tab I have it on right now shows me the games that I have loaded into the device. And preloaded here for the Verizon product, you see uh, Asphalt 6 Adrenaline from Gameloft, and then Bruce Lee Dragon Warrior from Digital Legends, Crash Bandicoot, that's a classic Sony title, uh, Madden NFL from EA Sports, and uh, around the world we're probably putting in uh, FIFA Soccer from EA, but probably for Verizon you're going to see uh, Madden NFL 11 instead. And then from Gameloft also we have Star Battalion, which is an, a space action game. And then from Electronic Arts you have Sims 3. Now two of these games support multiplayer gaming over Wi-Fi, Asphalt and Star Battalion. Either local Wi-Fi uh, for people playing in the same room, or I can go on the internet over Wi-Fi and play, play people around the world. Up to three people playing together on Star Battalion, and up to six people playing together on Asphalt. There's another tab here for more games, and that's not active here because the, the product is not commercial yet, but when it does become commercial and I hit more games, what you'll see is more thumbnail art images of games, but games that I can now go buy and download. And what happens, I'll touch the game and it'll show me a description and the pricing. And we expect the pricing to be about five to eight dollars per game. And then I can download the game and play it immediately and the charge will appear later on my Verizon bill. So it's very convenient. I'll also be able to buy more games from Android Market where we'll see lots and lots of games being developed and, and published on the Android Market. So let's open up one of the games and, and check one out. Go to Crash Bandicoot, which as I mentioned is a classic Sony title. And you can see the genuine gaming controller here. You've got the D-pad, uh, which gives me all of my directional controls for this particular game. And then over here with the PlayStation symbol buttons, I've got the ability to spin left and right. And there I go and I collect my fruit there. And then I can also jump. So as I move along and I'm looking around, I see some crabs coming up there. I can leap over them and leap over there and go break open another box and collect something. and and jump around. So you can see a lot of cool actions. And there I'm intentionally falling into the pit so we can start again there and, and see this particular game. Now there's other games that use the controls differently. So I also have this analog touchpad here that gives me dual analog joysticks. So for example, if I'm playing, uh, let me go back and, and close the controller and go back to the games again. If I'm playing, let's say, uh, Star Battalion, and I'll open that up. I have different ways that I can play. I can use the D-pad for climbing and diving and going left and right, but then I can also use the, the analog touchpad here. These are actually two analog joysticks. And we can see here's the, the teaser for uh, the asphalt, excuse me, Star Battalion game. And let me advance through that so we can get the game going a little faster. But uh, if a game developer writes to it, I have an option here. I can use these touchpads too for, for moving around. Uh, let's see, for example, with the Star Battalion game, excuse me, with Asphalt Game, I can drive my car. I can also change my point of view on the one on the right from being inside the car or being third person 
watching the race outside the car. In addition to all those controls, you have the trigger shoulder buttons here, left and right shoulder buttons. So if a developer writes to that, that gives me more functions too. For example, with this particular game, Star Battalion, and we'll see that once we get it going, I can use those trigger shoulder buttons to do barrel rolls with my spacecraft. So we'll get our spacecraft going, and what it's going to first do is take me through a little training mission. And as I mentioned, this is one of the games that does support multiplayer gaming over Wi-Fi. Important to point out here, you've got the PlayStation certified icon. And again, this is the first PlayStation certified device in the world and a full-fledged uh, smartphone to boot running on the latest version of the Android platform. So there's my spacecraft, and we'll start our training mission. So you see I can use the D-pad to move left or right, up and down, but then I can also go here, if I prefer, and use the touchpad for the analog joystick. So whatever my preference is. I can even, if I go into the options, I can change it to do pure motion control too. So now I'm gonna try my weapons, lining it up on the target. Back up a little bit and start firing. If I can get close enough, there I go, I blew that one up. Now let me go find another target here somewhere. Where is it? There it is. And I'll try my secondary weapon. Firing my torpedoes. Didn't quite get that one. Let's try a little lower. And looks my aim, my aim is a little bit off so late in the day. <laughs> but you get the idea. Yeah. And, and re remember I talked to, there we go, I blew it up. And remember I talked about those shoulder buttons. Let's see how that works with this game. Do my barrel rolls. Yeah, and now watch, I'm gonna press them both together. Say I'm lost in deep space, I'm out of, out of where I don't wanna be, I can press them both together and do a U-turn. So it's up to each game developer how they take advantage of all these controls, but they obviously have a wealth of controls to, to take advantage of. And so this makes it far superior to any touchscreen game interface because for one, you have all these different things that you can do for a complex game. If you're doing Angry Birds with just one function, that's fine for a touchscreen. But if you have a multiple of combination keys, there's nothing that beats real genuine gaming controls. And the fact that your fingers aren't in the way of the screen is, helps you to be able to enjoy it even more. You have great graphics supporting up to 60 frames per second and a great processor. You've got a, a chipset from Qualcomm that includes the second generation Snapdragon processor with the Adreno 205 graphics processor. And that's dual channel chipset, so it means it's just really fluid, nimble device, overall for the di device, but especially for the gaming. You know how much storage is in You have about uh, close to a half a, half a gig on, on the internal memory. It's about 400 meg, 500 meg. But the external memory, the removable memory, it comes with an eight gigabyte stick and supports up to 32 gigabyte. And the average size for a game uh, for this device is about 200 meg. Mm -hmm. It's a four inches screen and it's an FWVGA resolution. Awesome, all right, thank you. You're welcome, my thank pleasure. You.